Hi Felters and welcome and this is what we are going to make today. Um, once I had this idea in my head I just had to go ahead with it and do it. I took it out to the forest for a little photo shoot um, and I absolutely love it. So we've got some props just to get us inspired. I've got my mushroom notepad. I have done a little plan of what I wanted to do um, with rough colours and everything and then what I've got out I've got a core wool or it's a Perindale bat I use. I've got scarlet carded wool from World of Wool which is a fantastic mushroom colour, absolutely perfect. Then I've got a brown for the door and some wool. I've got the base. I've got a little bit of felt. You don't have to have that. We're going to do a pumpkin at the front door and some other wools just to play around with. So first up, we are going to take a really large piece of your core wool or whatever, I, whatever wool you prefer to use. So I like to shape out my felts and then firm them up so we're going to just create the shape of the base now further on when I get towards the end I do use quite a bit of glue on this felt I don't normally do that but it just happened to um, be needed towards the end of this one so if you don't like using glue on your felts watch this all the way through and then come back and adapt it you could put a piece of wire in the middle of your base and then a hole in your wooden base and pull it through and secure it or you could just do a felted base to attach your mushroom to and that would be absolutely fine so i'm using my multi uh, needle holder it's got 440 spirals in it and it works really well and it really penetrates into the wool with the 40 spirals in it you can put eight in this one but four is more than enough so we're just shaping it out and I will do measurements later on and I do do this mushroom really quite large and I'm going to put the top is going to be at an angle so we're going to sort of encourage that angle in a minute but we're going to build up another layer and I like it to be nice and sort of chunky around the middle um, and then we're going to build up the top and again as I said this is all quite loosely put together at the moment and then we're going to go all the way over and firm it up which takes a long time because of the size of it but this is all the preparation once you've done this in the top everything else is just a little bit of detail so this is the majority of your felt here the time spent doing all of this and I find it quite therapeutic so as you can see it's really quite chunky it's still really very loosely felted at the moment so I just go round it and round it for about five minutes with the multi-needle tool holder then we needed to build up one side of the top in order to get the angle and we're going to smooth the edge of it in a minute so don't worry about join marks and so just keep applying the wool applying the wool and by the time you've finished um, firming it all up it's going to be a third smaller anyway so as you can see so I went all the way over it and now we're going to get the clover pen which has got 240 triangulars in it and I'm going to felt it fairly closely all the way around and it did take at least an hour I didn't do it all in one go I come back to it I sort of work around the middle and then do the top and bottom so I will cut that bit so you don't have to see me sit here for ages but this is it sort of in brief at the start so you can really see it firming up in that middle bit and so I've gone all the way over it there and it's a little bit bumpy so we're going to get some smooth bats just um whatever you want your outer layer to be I just use the Perindale back because it's a perfect color for me and a nice thin layer and then take a fine needle 40 uh, 40 triangular this one is and just spend again more time just going all the way over it and this firms it up so about three and a half wide and four just over four at the highest point it's up to you you don't have to do your mushroom this size but this is just to give you an idea and here I am just firming it up and getting that nice smooth finish working all the way around and the carded bats just really help you give get that smooth finish really quite easily so still going I just got that little bit left there to do and we're going to be putting lots of detail on this as well so really it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but yeah here I am just sort of going all the way through it and finishing it it's lovely when you get to that point and it's all finished and it's all smooth so there we go so I'm quite happy with that put that to the side so we're going to do the top and all I do is take a huge bit of wool and just fold it in fold it in if you've got slithers just lay them all out and then just fold them in and you sort of make this 
dome shape and then we're going to put some more on the top of it anyway. So I'm roughly getting a shape out of it and then just tack it all in place so it stays and check you're happy with the size. I had one edge bit which was a little bit weak just there so in a minute you're going to see I'm going to add a little bit more wool onto that um, corner just to build it up. You can feel where you've got sort of weak points where there's not as much wool so there. So I just literally just get a bit of wool, place it top and bottom, oh, it's still taking out the bits even though I don't really need to <laughs> um, and just um, felt the wool on. So again this is going to take you time, this doesn't happen in 15 minutes. So I've done a very basic shape but we need it to be higher so I'm going to sort of fold over some wool, pop that on the top, felt that on loosely again and then I to even it out I get a huge bit and just apply that over the top of all of it and that just helps get a smooth edge and then before we actually firm all of this up I'm going to apply I'm just testing it for the for the size um, I'm going to apply um, the red because if I'm going to be spending a long time felting it I might as well do it with the red as well so easily five five and a bit and height wise I think it's about three just over three but again you know yours doesn't have to be the same size as mine so I go round it again with the four needle and then we're just going to get the red which is in slithers you can say slithers whatever you want to say there's no right or wrong here and just apply all the red and I will show you sort of how I apply it in strands across and because it's carded it merges really well it's not a problem so I applied all the red now we just want to fold it over the um, edge and down onto the underside by about half an inch we're going to put wool on the underside so you don't need to do red all the way underneath so I applied all the red and then I took my clover pen and I worked it all the way over uh, and again this took a long time easily an hour try not to flatten your dome too much I do around the middle and then I do underneath and then I finally do the top and the edges so this wasn't quite domey enough <laughs> there we go so I'm going to apply a load more red to build it out um, I kind of suspected it wasn't going to be dome, domey enough earlier but I thought uh, I've got plenty of red I'll just uh, build it out with the red so again I added another layer but I wanted it to have a nice round shape so it's up to you you might want your mushroom to be more pointed and then I worked it all over again but because you've done it already once this it, the second time it's a lot quicker because it's a lot firmer so there we are so I've gone all the way around really happy with that checking the angles good everything I, I want it at is good and how we're going to apply the door so I think next we're going to do the wool underneath which just this was a way in which I thought I could do this so I just took some chunky white wool and I'm just going to attach it about a quarter of an inch from the edge I don't want it to go right to the edge because some of it might show through on the top side as I was felting so I just wanted it slightly in and so I went up and down and then up and down up and down up and down and it kind of it got a bit lumpy in the middle you kind of have to cross over I did the top side and then I went down to the bottom and then I did one edge and then the other edge just go where the wool takes you and you'll see in the end I do quite like the effect of this I think it's a really quick way in order to, a quick way to do the gills so I've done three up there and because you, you have to sort of fan them out correctly and that was quite tricky but as you can see here I went down and then I ended up going across it a bit and then you do slightly smaller ones at the edge but it does um, work out and because you've got such a big base in the middle you're not going to see any of that so here we are just speeding it up a bit for you so you can you know get the picture of how I did it you could cut them if you want but I think folding it over you're not left with that little end bit at the edge which I don't think would work and then I, I did just trim this and start again at the other side there just to finish it just having a look what do I think yeah I think that works and it's a nice little effect so there we go it's all done 
Um, really enjoyed that bit. However, it didn't make it hard for attaching the base, but I'll talk to you about that later. So we're going to do the door, and I am finding anything that you can uh, felt that the needle goes through, you can attach wool to. So it could be linen, it could be cotton, it could be wool, it can be pre-felt. I just find by cutting out the shape and attaching the wool round it, it really helps me uh, build out the shape I want. You can just obviously put some wool on the mat, draw a shape of the door in it, fold it over and it'll be fine. But I really enjoy having um, something to felt it onto. So you literally felt one side with the wool, turn it over and then fold all the edges in and it gives you a nice smart edge. There we go. You can see it's really easy to do. None of the white from the felt goes through to the other side, so that's nice. And that's the bottom of the door. And then I neatened it up with a finer needle and then I popped it on. So I, I used the clover pen to really sort of firm it on and then I took a finer needle and I neaten up the edges by uh, felting them into, into the side a bit and then down. And for the edge of the door, I just took some brown wool and it wasn't thick enough, so I plaited it. And then I'm just going to lay it around the top of the door just to give the door an edge. And I just think it looks a bit, <clears throat> a bit better, excuse me. You might have a, um, some wool that is definitely thick enough or you might have a, a different coloured brown or a black that you might want to just put around the outside. And then for the door handle, I just took a little bit of grey. Um, again, I'm using a yarn, but you don't have to. You could just use any grey wool. And I just twisted it round to get that circular shape and just gave it a little felt, really simple. And then we're going to do two door hinges. Now you could do the door different colours. Um, you could do the door with wool strands going up and down to give it the wood effect. So there's lots of things you can play around with with this. You don't have to do exactly the same as me. So these are the two little hinges, nice and simple. And we're going to do a window. So again, I cut out one shape and I cut out another one the same size because we're going to put that in the cap in the top of the mushroom. And I used a beige to go in the window. You could use a yellow, a grey. I just thought that a sort of a beigey colour worked quite well. And it's exactly the same technique as the door. You just um, fold it under, neaten the edges. And then we're going to pop it on. Again, attaching it exactly the same way. And if you felted the base nice and firm, it's really easy to attach things. And then I neaten it up. Then we're going to take some of the brown wool in the same colour as the door because I thought that looked quite smart. We're going to do a stripe across and a stripe um, vertical. So a horizontal and a vertical. Try and make sure they're straight um, if you look at it from the front. Um, and I do the edges slightly bigger than they should be. And then if those um, end bits are too long, just cut them off. But if they're slightly longer than they should be, you can sometimes you just felt them in a bit and they sort of disappear. You don't want it to be the exact length of the window because they'll sort of shrink in and be too short then. So stripes across and then take a bit of brown and go all the way around the outside. So really simple effect for the window. If you, I mean, a yellow in the window would look lovely. I just think it didn't go with my colours that I was doing. Um, but most people put a yellow in or a grey. A light grey would work really well as well to sort of represent the glass. So there we go, that's the window done. And then do exactly the same and put the window on the cap, which you don't need to sit through me doing. So work out where you want it. I tried to sort of balance it up, but you can put it where you want. And that gives you a nice window effect. I'm going to do a chimney there in a bit. So that's the window's done and the door. So now I was going to do the spots and I want the spots to be fairly large. So take a bit of wool, rub it through in your hands just to bring it together and then start attaching it. So we're going to go up close in a sec. To try and get the edge of the dots nice, you can see me felting in almost parallel to them and that helps me get the nice crisp edge. So you felt it on, felt the edges in and then um, go round and just tidy up any bits and that gives you a nice neat 
dot effect. You could just use white felt and cut out circles. That would be a quick way of doing it. <laughs> um, so here's the last dot going on. I did a mixture of big and small. I think it gave a nice effect. Now these are uh, green locks that I got blue face. <laughs> I always do that. Blue faced Lester locks off um, Etsy or if you're UK based Zoe Robson Fleece for You on Facebook. And we're just going to do them growing up either side of the door. Um, I kind of did think actually this house looked really sweet without any greenery. So you could just leave it at that. But I just wanted to make it a little bit more magical and a bit more fairy like. So just take the locks, um, the nice part of the locks that you can find. I do cut off that bit at the base there because you don't want too much building up underneath um, your mushroom for when you glue it down. And then I did some locks on the other side. And then these locks were multi sort of a variety of greens. So that worked well. So add in lots of different colors. And then I did some flowers and we're just going to show you how to do the flowers now. But I did do greenery going all the way around the back. So I used this blend that I had from World of Wool. I'm not sure what the name of the color, but there's a lot of sort of pink blends. So just go and have a look at the tops and um, you twist it and twist it back on itself. So you've got a nice thin bit and then you keep rolling in opposite directions and it twists up and into itself. We'll do it a little bit closer in a second. So this is how you just create a sort of twisted bit of wool and then you felt that on. So that's what it looks like up close. Let me show you again. So twist, 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 and then just keep twisting in opera. See, it comes out all the time. Keep twisting in opposite directions. And then it twists in and around on itself and it gets you that nice effect. If the tail is too long, there's a little bit left on this one. I just trimmed the um, end of it off. See that bit there? But uh, felt it in and it just gives you the rough effect of a little bit of a flower. To be fair, you could probably just do anything with a bit of pink or a bit of yellow or red and it would look good. So, so there we go. The flowers are done. Um, and we're just going to do the mushrooms. So I don't show you how to do this because I'm sure you can work out by now. A bit of pipe cleaner and I just made a mini mushroom. And so that's all the details that I wanted. Now I tried to attach the base. It did not work because the wool was in the way. Uh, so I took some glue, a lot of glue, and I attached the top with glue. And that has worked really, really well. Um, I don't normally use this much glue and it is completely up to you. If you had a thinner layer of wool, it would probably attach a lot better. And so I tied it on with ribbons and let it set. Then I went uh, to do the base and I just took a green mix. You can use any green. I did a little bit of gray for a path up to the door. Just check that it will, it's, be, it's in the right place for the door. So there we go. And I just loosely felted the base. Now, if you wanted to do a firm base, you could spend a bit more time and then you could attach the, ba uh, the bottom of the mushroom to the base. And so I glued that onto the wood because I quite like my little wood base. And then I did a mini mushroom. A cheating way of doing the lines is to take a bit of cotton or thread and just tie it around and you get the segments of the mushroom. It was very fiddly though. <laughs> it was very small and difficult to tie the knots, but you can see it works well. And then um, I did a little stalk and then I just added a tiny bit of the green locks on it as well. But it's a teeny weeny cute mushroom. So I was really pleased with it. And then that's all of the sort of extra details I was going to do. And then I glued the base of the mushroom onto the greenery and I tied it all up and it worked fairly well. I had to reapply a bit more glue afterwards because it was a bit wobbly. Um, so, and then I just glued the pumpkin on. So I really did have a day of gluing. But anyway, here it is. I'm really happy with it. I've done that idea from my head. So I'm really, really pleased. I hope you've enjoyed it. Any questions, pop them below. But I have quite a few mushroom videos now. So I'll put the, the uh, playlist up here. But thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.